Home is where connections are made, memories are formed, and ideas are born. And no one knows home better than NFM. Thanks for tuning in to I Am Home, the podcast that goes deeper than trends and dives into what it means to make your house a home. Hello and welcome to another episode of the I Am Home podcast. I'm Tyler Weiskup from NFM headquarters. We don't have Hillary today, but I am joined by our co-hostess with the mostest, Becca <laughs> Sudbeck. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Becca. And for the month of May, it's our Berkshire annual meeting time. And being a Berkshire Hathaway company, we decided that um, talking investments for the home would be a really fun topic. Uh, so we're chatting with two NFMers who are experts in landscaping for curb appeal, which um, direly needed, I feel like, for a lot of folks out there, myself included, uh, figuring out a way to kind of like update the face of our home. Landscaping is a really, truly a big investment um, that makes a big impact. Yes. Um, they'll be joining us here in a second. But before we get to that, let me tell you why we're even doing this podcast. And that's because NFM is more than just your everything home store. We're in the business of improving lifestyles because your home life should be your best life. So let me introduce our experts today. We are so happy to have them. Hello, Holly. Hello. And hello, Kathy. Hi there. Hi. Uh, Holly and Kathy are both from NFM, but join us with years of experience from Omaha's top local garden center and centers. They've worked in multiple areas. Holly, uh, Holly, um, Holly, let me get your last name. Holly Reith yeah. um, awesome. <laughs> is nearly 10 years experience. Wow. That's so appropriate for today's topic too. This is spot on. Uh, started in custom potting, worked her way up to become a seasonal plants manager at NFM. She's our transportation finance manager and has been for a number of years. Uh, you've been, you just said like over 10 years now at NFM. Yep. President's You're, Award winner last year. Yeah, congratulations. I had that down. Next you beat me to show. it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, Holly. That's excellent. You're also a mom of two. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all that I have for you. A little bio. Any any shout outs? Anyone that you want to say uh, hello to out there in the in the digital footprint world? And my daughter, she called me and she goes, where are you going? Because she was tracking me on my 360. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to go do my podcast. You're doing a what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also on TikTok. That's quite rather embarrassing for them. So, I love you know, this. Good. I love it's it. Embarrassing them is so good for them. It is. It really is. And Kathy, uh, Kathy Cowles. Yes. Got it. Perfect. Okay. Yep. yep you, you, you join us with years of experience in the plant world as well. Multiple okay. garden centers. We were just talking about before we jumped on the mic. Uh, you now work in area rug sales. Yep. How long have you been with NFM? So it'll be five years in August. Awesome. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming up coming up. Uh, and you are, you've got two kids, you've got three grandchildren. Uh, and you said that you love, 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 love gardening. I do. I do. Excellent. Hobby, which is the perfect person type of catalog of people that we need to talk about today's topic, mm -hmm. uh, landscaping for curb appeal. And I'd love to start by asking you to where did your interest in um, landscaping or plants come from? So for me, uh, growing up, my grandmother and my mom always had flowers in their yard, not necessarily landscaping, but they always had flowers. Yeah. And then my dad specifically, he was a landscape architect with uh, the National Park Service. Oh, wow. Uh, and so, yeah, he and so for growing up, it was just always appreciation of everything outside nature. And so that's where I think it came from. Well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. That makes yeah. perfect sense. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it was too. awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. What a cool way to, to grow up. Yeah. And just being connected to the outdoors that yep. way. Saw every national park pretty much west of the Missouri. So oh, pretty much. Cool. Wow. Look pretty much. So, yeah. I, man, that's my dream. I love yeah. that, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> Holly, what about you? Um, for me, it was uh probably in about my twenties. I got asked, Hey, I don't have someone to maintain my landscape outside. You want to come do it? And I'm like, what am I doing? She's like pulling weeds, deadhead. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I need some college money, right? So uh, I started doing that and then I just loved it. I loved then the next year I started learning about more about annuals and tropicals and container gardening, um, went to school for it. Um, yeah. And now I just do stuff around the house and I'm, I'm dangerous. Don't give me a free weekend because <laughs> something's getting ripped up and replaced. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we were talking just before we joined uh, on the mic that you had gotten into into the dirt. Yes, is, is that how they they say it in the biz? I uh, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. Just hands over free. the weekend. Yes, um, yeah, I tore out some old flagstone pavers in an area I didn't like anymore. Grass kept dying, so tore it up, tilled up the soil, took the soil out. Yeah, threw down some rock and new pavers, new flagstone. Everything leads all the way up to my pool deck. And yeah, yeah, till awesome. the garden plant yeah. seeds. What else? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect. I think you should definitely be sharing pictures of this too, so we can kind of show off this the space. They're on my phone, yeah, I yeah. Can do that. All right, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get them after. We'll get them after. Okay, so, um, our big theme this month we kind of previewed in the beginning is investing in your home, and I wonder if you can help listeners justify why landscaping is so important for curb appeal. Um, what makes what, what makes sense for I mean, I think it makes sense intuitively, but let's spell it out for people. So it's it's a kind of like when you, the inside of your home, you, you paint it, you get new furniture, yeah. you refurbish inside the home. It's the same thing as outside. The outside tells people who you are. It softens your home. Right. Um, it just makes it more aesthetically pleasing. And you also, if you have a really nice, complete landscaping, it actually increases your home value by about 10%, mm -hmm. yes. which is a big deal if down the road you're going to, you know, sell your home. So it's not just to make yourself feel better, but it also adds value. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So if it's maintained. I so. think it also sets your home apart from everyone else's on the block. Yeah. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of homes are... They look similar. similar. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. they had the same landscape company come in and plop a tree in the front. And so that's your whole street. But if you go in and make that your own, right, right. Add your own touches and your own different things, yeah, your house is going to stand out a lot more and people are going to like that. Well, I and think. I think too, yeah. and that's exactly right. And I think too, even something sim simple like containers, container yeah. gardening, that's to me is where you can get instant impact. I do Instant, agree with that. And I, I, I like that that's exactly, people's like yep, yep, containers yep, and planters yep, on their yep, porches. Yep, like yep, so, I, I'm yep. always like, ooh, I really like that one. And yep. I notice when they change them. And yep. yeah, and, and you can really make a statement with yeah. See, that's I I like landscaping, but I love doing containers. And you should put your containers not only just on your porch, but you should put them in your landscape. Yes. you should put them in your berms. So think outside yep. the box. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's well, how you're different. Um, yep. So yep. we're using yep. some terms now that I feel like uh, <laughs> if you're if you're new to the topic, you may not understand. So like, let's define some of these so that we mm -hmm. have kind of a good jumping off point for people who are thinking about landscaping for curb appeal. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell us, Holly, one of the the ones that you had suggested was the differences between uh, full sun, part sun, and shade plants. I, it's very important when you are going to go put something in your landscaping, whether it be in a container, the landscape bed, whatever, you need to know your sun exposure. You need to know, do I face east, north, south, west, whatever. Don't, you know, don't go into your garden center and go, I don't know, it just, it's over there. You know, that doesn't help. <laughs> I'm on 120. Um, yeah, I yeah. I don't know, it faces a corner. Um <laughs> It's also important to where you're going to plant to notice is that morning sun. How many hours of sun is it getting? Um, more like four or less is is pretty shady. Yeah. Uh, four to six, you got kind of a part sun, part shade. Anything with more than six is full sun. Like, got it. And if it's the west side, that's gonna cook. So west and right. south sides, right? Those are hot that's exposure your... areas. You want to make sure you're getting plants that can take that that kind of heat, that dry. Gotcha. All that. Um, whereas your north and your east sides aren't as hot. Right. Um, but yeah. Makes sense. Know where, where your sun's going to be. Know yeah. where, which direction you're facing. Yeah. Keep yeah. all that in mind before you pick out stuff. This right. might seem like a really silly question, but so are there full, like there, you can find full sun plants that will survive like the Summer oh, gosh, yes. Nebraska oh, summers, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, you know, do you want specifics? I'm or no, just, I just the answer. I mean, yeah, I'm exactly, the, exactly. I am the opposite of a green thumb. Um, <laughs> so what you so, can do, go to, go to the garden, set, garden centers or experts, you know, people there know. But if you go, I actually go to some of the other 
places around town <laughs> and get really good deals on plants. Yeah. But ask the people that are there yeah. what can actually stand West Sun. Okay. And people, you know, the people there are experts or should be experts at, at you know, what they're. Right. Yeah. Okay. Selling. Well, Becca isn't going to ask for the specifics, but I want to know a couple. Yeah. Can you tell, <laughs> tell me if I'm looking at full, some of the full sun areas? So for yeah. me, I love, love, love um, like uh, begonias. Like not just dragon wing begonias, but bada bing begonias. And me, for me, I put them on my in my berm in the front yard, which gets full blazing sun. And there are times where I sort of I didn't mean to, but sort of neglected them, and they just <laughs> they did back. great. And They're they fun. just mm -hmm. they yeah love them, and they can tolerate hardly any water, lots of water. Yeah, so love them. Pretty resilient. Love them. Love them. <laughs> yeah. And those yeah. are an annual. Yeah. So if you plant yeah. those in your landscaping and stuff, you're gonna have to do it again next year. That's yeah. what an annual is. You're kind of okay. annually you have to do planting it. Every it. Year. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah, every okay. year versus a perennial, which would survive our winters. Correct. Yes. Correct. And yeah. So but I, I put annuals in my I in my landscape bed because yep. Yeah. Can it's I ask another colors. question? Is it what's a tulip? <laughs> a that, bulb. It's a bulb. <laughs> okay. That you plant in the fall. Every year. No, you yes. plant it in the fall, and then yeah. it comes up in the spring, and then and then after I know it blooms, it's like and it's for done. like a couple. It's like that's yeah, a, oh, they're like so pretty. I see my spring. neighbors with yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, but they're they're only there for like a week or two. Yeah. Right, right. They're your but early they're early spring. They're those things that make you go. Spring's yeah, spring's coming. That's right. like why I like them so <laughs> right, much. Right, right, right. <laughs> my neighbors, I'm like, oh, they have their tulips up. <laughs> yep. Those are fun. They are. They are. <laughs> so you plant them once though, and they come back every year. Correct. Mm -hmm. Until they're tired. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a whole nother. Subject. That's a different. Yeah. 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 Okay. They go. Well, oh, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good tips already. I think I just had a couple more um, uh, terms: uh, softscaping versus hardscaping. I, I feel like I've heard that, but I I don't really understand because I I don't know soft is like dirt soft. I don't know like hard. What I don't quite understand. I I consider the plants the softscapes. Correct. Okay. Your hardscapes are your boulders, your your other things gotcha. that you're using. Rocks. It's it's the rock for the bedding instead of mulch. Mulch yeah. is a hardscape too, but correct. It's, yeah, it's your edging. It's your your retaining walls. Um, gotcha. Okay. What would be good description? It's not breathing like a plant. Right. How I about love that? that. <laughs> Actually, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's perfect. Okay. Um, and what is the importance of grading? I've heard this term before. I kind of know what it means, <laughs> but like, what does it mean, especially when it comes to, to curb appeal landscaping? Well, as far as grading, um, you know, if you're in a home, it should have already been graded mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah, but I, if you're going in and changing anything, you just always want to make sure you're at about a two degree um, grade away from your house ish. Yeah. Is yes. that so? Is that to prevent water from like going into your foundation? Correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Perfect. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay. I think these are good introductory terms so that we're all on the same page. We talked a little bit about container planting. Have we defined that one yet? So for for me, container planting, whether it's on your front porch, in your berms. So like right now, I just did mine with some pansies and, and stuff because I needed to get something in there. Yeah. And in a little while, I'll probably change them out after Mother's Day to the, the next phase. And then come uh, fall, I will change it into something else. Yeah. And then come winter, I'll actually put greens in them to have interest. So I'll have interest in, in my landscape all year which, yeah. with mm -hmm. just containers. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and they're just like the pots and the planters and the things that you stick that aren't already in the ground. Correct. Again, they're whatever you put in there, it's not going to survive the winter. Yeah. So you're right. going to redo it um, every year. But th I think that's why I love containers so much. Me too. Because you, you know, you can go with a theme. I like purple and hot pink or something. Yeah. Yeah. And the next year you can go oranges and yellows, and you can change it out with different foliage plants like coleus and f blooming plants like. Oh, lantana so is fun. one of my favorites for for hot, dry, yep. multiple colors, lots of flowers all cool. summer long. So correct. I containers are just they can take something so plain and make it so amazing. I, right. I like using tropicals like palms in mine mm -hmm. around the, the pool deck, yeah. around the pool, and you just get this whole different feel it's like this is nebraska but i got palm trees right, you know right. <laughs> well it, it softens it softens whatever area yeah it, they're in it just does yeah so, yeah okay i think we're at the point now where i want to talk a little bit about like 
landscaping easy to hard. Like we've we've thrown out like a lot of good terms. We've talked about like some fun things that you could potentially do, but like tell me about what suggestions that you would have for um, the kind of landscaping that you would do yourself versus what you may want to outsource to somebody else. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> she's already done some big hardscaping. She's um, the expert. Yeah, block walls, yeah. ponds. Um, yeah, I've done all that stuff. And if you're not in shape for it, don't do it. Yeah, right. Hire it out. Um, be prepared. But it's black back-breaking work, and yeah. you you should pay that much for it. To yeah. be honest with you, because right. it's a lot of work. So like the heavy stuff where we're moving, mm -hmm. like. Concrete Big blocks, and yeah, yeah, yeah. digging out, uh, backfilling the wall with pea gravel and then your dirt and getting your beds all set. Um, yeah, I mean, burying that bottom layer, all that stuff. Yeah, it's the, the hardscapes, the, the, all that is just, it's a labor intensive. Right. You don't have the time, but you want to do hire it. it out. Yeah, right, right. Hire it out. If you're going to do it yourself... Don't try and do it in a day. Don't try and do it in two days. Give yourself a week, two weeks. Um, if you're experienced and been doing it for a while, you can probably do it in a weekend. But a lot I mean, of people, most of us, yeah, yeah can't, 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 I can't, I can't. Well, I do I'll, four hours, and then I'm like, I need the rest of my day to play now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think too, um, when you talk landscaping, I think people see their entire property. Yeah. Yeah. Think small. Break it down. Think this area first okay and um you know you can also call uh, landscape companies and have mm -hmm. them give you a design yeah and then maybe you only do this uh, right in front of your house first um you don't have to do everything all at once you know and if like holly said if you want to if you want to do it yourself great then just do this one spot or just do a berm in your front yard yeah. don't do the whole thing yeah you know, I like that suggestion because, yeah, I think most of us are like, well, we ha I'm going to start it. I got to like make it perfect in the weekend. Right. right. Like yeah. I got to go exactly. head over to the garden center and figure this out in one day. Right. And that's no, that's too much. And right. a lot of You're us gonna are just going to It's overwhelming. No. Yeah. It's over <laughs> just like it's almost like coming here and customers walk in and they need a couch. Yep. Like, oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> same, same kind of thing. Don't don't look at it as a one great big picture yeah look at it as manageable pieces yeah but i do think it's a a good point like if you do have like eventually want to do the whole yard to like have someone help you design it and mm -hmm. then just do it piece by piece but Correct. so you know you're gonna have your full picture at the end of it right but yeah. then Correct. you can break it up into little segments right. makes it manageable chunks. yeah, yeah. Yep. another yep. thing too i think when you do go to a landscape designer kind of have an idea of what you want be looking at pinterest I go vacations in tropical areas yeah. and I'm like, that's beautiful. I, how can I put that in my yard? How can I do that? So I'll take pictures. And so a lot of my yard I designed off of the things I'd seen in travels or on Pinterest or whatever, but have an idea, a little bit of an idea because that designer then can take your idea and make something you probably never even imagined mm -hmm. that you could come up with. Right. But if you just walk in and go, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You should have a little bit it's of an not idea. Helpful. It's, it's not, not helpful. helpful. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but a good landscape designer will take into account what your home looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously budget too, but what your home looks like. And they will also ask you how much do you want to maintain? Yeah. Do you want to be in the yard? Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be in the yard, then you're going to get shrubs and some boulders and yeah. shrubs and boulders. <laughs> <laughs> the end. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. right. I don't want to maintain so. anything. Okay, here's a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. For you listening, <laughs> Kathy was not rolling her eyes at all yeah, <laughs> talking about shrubs and boulders alone. Uh, well, I wonder if we can talk a little bit more about that general approach to arranging plants, plants for maximum visual impact. I mean, obviously, if we can outsource that to have somebody help us, we talked about the, like okay. sourcing different options. Um, but if you're trying to come up with some of it yourself or you just want to kind of get started, where, how would you suggest people go ahead and um, dive in? So a good suggestion, like Holly kind of said too, go to Pinterest. Are we talking, you're talking containers, that kind of thing, or just because the internet is such a wealth of yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but if you're talking specifically like containers, you can go to, there's websites like Proven Winners, mm -hmm. Ball Seed. Okay. There's different places people can go and they're called recipes. Okay. And even for landscaping, there's recipes for 
creating a landscape. And then with that, you can, you know, go in and decide, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. I don't like that. And that would be a good way to start with landscapers, too. Mm -hmm. I like this. And but yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Is there like an easy, cause there's so many plants, you guys, like there's a <laughs> there lot really of, are. there's a lot of plants. For people that don't know stuff, you walk into one of those like garden centers and I'm like, oh, it's my worst nightmare. <laughs> I know nothing and I feel so uncomfortable and out of place. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I think your garden centers now, uh, other places like I would say Lowe's, Home Depot, they have plants, but if you want help, you need to go to Educated a garden center. Help. You need to go to a garden center. Yeah, yeah. You, you just do. You're better and off. they're great at helping you do color, form, texture, shape. Okay. And well, that's where you should yeah, go. Tell us a little bit about that. Even if you're, if you, because clearly, I mean, it looks like <laughs> if I'm asking the question this way, <laughs> you're, you, we should direct people to the help that they need. But like, <laughs> like just so that someone feels in, a little bit informed, T talk to me about some of what you're just saying, like the color, texture, or there's something else that you form, say. Form, something else. Yeah. Color, form, texture, shape. So you don't want to do, whether it's your landscape or your containers, you don't want to do just everything. I call it like big leaves, like, like <laughs> cannas and just one mass of the same texture. Gotcha. So you want to have things that have airy feels. You want to, and actually what's, what is it? Thriller, thriller, filler and spiller. Yeah. Thriller, filler, spiller in your oh, pot. So the, the, so the thriller is the tall. Yep. Okay. Um, filler is the stuff around. Medium. Yeah. And Twelve, then the spiller are the vines the to go on. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Correct. The so trail. keep that in mind and keep in keep in mind colors, and then yeah. that'll help you. Yeah. And then really, it's just go to then you go and you go to the garden center or Lowe's wherever. Yeah. And look for what catches your eye. If you if a purple flower catches your eye, then okay. build on that. Look at the tag, the plant ID tags. Yeah. Okay. That'll tell you too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Gotcha. But. And the, and like you said, the local garden centers are going to be the people to ask. They're also probably going to have the plants that work well for an, like the state for that you live area. in. Yeah. Yeah. Versus for like. Zone, hardiness zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's all good to know. Any other tips, anything else that you may suggest for folks who are um kind of jumping into this point i know some of the like we've talked a little bit about um some of this at scale and proportion uh focal points maybe something along that line something that like helps people kind of find a place to really dig their teeth into to, to a project like this i think it's important when you are talking designing your landscape whether that be your front yard your backyard your side yards whatever i think it's important that you you make sure that it also fits the environment. Um, you don't want to go create, I call them postage size stamp front yards. You know, you don't want to fill it so full that you can't even find the front door. Mm. Um, so keep that in mind to not overwhelm. Um, consider the size of something and what it's going to grow to at its maturity. Don't take yeah. this cute little blue spruce and put it in your front yard. And in 40 years, you have no front yard and again, no front door Yeah, because um, it's going to get big. So have an idea in mind of the things you want that you like. Again, take those pictures when you're on those vacations. Look at the things other people are doing, but don't don't just start throwing stuff in the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Have a purpose, have a reason for it. Yeah. I like that. Kathy, can you maybe expand a little bit on like mistakes to avoid because i think you were saying some of those brilliantly yeah. holly and i think that's like probably a good thing to help people when they're visiting the garden center so that they can be a little bit more informed so um if you're going to do foundation plantings as holly said make sure you read the tags if you're going to plant some kind of evergreen and it says it's going to get 15 feet wide don't plant it two feet away from your foundation okay. and people do it all the time or they plant yeah a japanese maple like right next to their house yeah and in 10 years from now it's going to be 15 feet wide yeah the other thing too is if you live in a home that is let's say it's a two-story home and it's 30 feet high sure and you're going to do a foundation planting don't plant your foundation with a little boxwood that's you know two feet tall you need something to you anchor that height. corner to, to make it in proportion with the size, the scale of your house. So gotcha. do a columnar spruce or something like that. So something to soften that yeah. up. Right. Because like otherwise, so harsh right. Boxy. Right. Because yeah. then it just looks like you got this big, gigantic house with this teeny, tiny <laughs> little pet. 
So, <laughs> well, this has been perfect. It's been so fun. I, we we didn't even get into some of these other questions that I have on um, like designing for your aesthetic. We didn't even get into like finishing touches with like lighting and with uh, uh, outdoor speakers or waterfall. I feel like there's so much more for us to kind of cover. Yeah. You know, it'd be great to have you back. But I do have one final question, at least kind of land us on uh, to end our time together. What's the most unusual or unexpected landscaping feature that you've you've ever seen and just have, have just been in love with? Oh, I don't know. Um, go ahead. Well, so for me, um, my neighbors down the street, they have these huge, their front steps, the huge, huge flagstone mm -hmm. steps, okay. but they're not, but they're floating. Oh. And then they have lights underneath. Mm. Wow. And I sort of secretly covered it, but I, you know, but just it's, That's it's neat. cool. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. And you can't really, even under, you can't, yeah, it's just cool. Yeah. There's like these floating huge flagstone steps. Yeah. That's neat. I yeah. love that. Yeah. 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 It's cool. I, my latest thing um, a couple of years ago, I think, was the introduction of the cables on the decking. Okay. Instead of yep. using your spindles, the cabling. Well, some people use glass too, but I, the glass. I'm sorry, I got I mean, kids and rocks. You know? <laughs> no, and no yeah, glass. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to clean it every time yeah. the wind yeah. blows and the rains <laughs> and snows. So I have the cabling, and I really oh, like it cool. because you yeah. can see through everything. But it, you know, it's gonna keep somebody from falling off the deck. Yeah. Um, I think too, when it comes to like the softscapes in in the landscape, the cool and unusual, the twisted evergreens, the like. Harry Lauder's walking stick. Mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. um, the Japanese maples. Things that are really fun and kind of an eye catcher are the things I like to just randomly stick here and there. I mean, it has a purpose, it has a random purpose, but mm -hmm. um, I think some of those things are really great. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Oh, well, um, I can I can feel the enthusiasm, the passion. We like I said, there's so much more to cover. So I'd love to have you both back if we could. Sure. Um, but um, for today, I want to just thank you for your time, Holly sure. and Kathy. I also want to thank Becca and of course our producer Scott Licati. And thanks to everyone who's listening. Remember, ratings help people find the show. You know, likes, uh, smash that subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Wherever you listen, <laughs> uh, then hop over to nfm.com where you can shop 24 seven for everything outdoors and indoors too. Uh, then again, remember home is what you make it. Thanks for joining us today for I am home with Tyler Weiskopf, Hillary Waltemath and Becca Sudbeck. No one knows home quite like NFM. So if you'd like more information on home design at NFM, please check out NFM.com and leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice.